Hello and welcome back. Today we have something very exciting going on because it's going to be fixing a blog post that I wrote in 2022. And I have with me Kevin on the phone explaining some cool stuff around how does Code Magic solve my problem. Kevin, great to have you on. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Um, really excited to be here. And we have been preparing this one for a while. We're going to talk about uh, CI/CD for uh, especially a Flutter application, which some of you might know. I have been trying to solve for a while, right? So if you look at this blog post, and Kevin, you know this. I yeah. sent this to you a little bit earlier. It's from June 2022. This was actually the blog post that brought me into doing public speaking, because writing this blog post gave me the possibility to present about this blog post essentially at ReInvent 2022, which was amazing. But this blog post has a problem. It solves the problem on how to do it solves the problem on how to deploy the backend of a Flutter application. It solves the problem on how to deploy a Flutter web application. And it also generates APK files and an, an iOS file using code magic down here. What it doesn't do is it does not bring these applications to either the app stores, uh, the app store or to the Play Store. And uh, you're here today to help me understand how would I fix this for a Flutter application, bringing this especially to iOS. That's how we're going to start. Uh, but obviously, we can use the same patterns to go to um, and the Play Store as well. Kevin, are you up for that? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's get going. Yeah, let's go. Then maybe let's start with. You saw that Code Magic logo, and I know that you work for them, so you might know a little bit what 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 does Code Magic do. So maybe let's explain our listener, listeners a little bit. What are you famous for? Yeah, so we are initially famous for uh, providing mobile centric CI/CD, and and how we get started or how we got started was with the Flutter community. Um, so we started Code Magic back in two thousand and eighteen. Um, and launched at the Google event where they released the Flutter 1.0. Um, so it was a really big moment for us. And we've been continuing down that path of, of mobile specific CI CD since then. And we've expanded out to uh, support technologies such as Swift and React Native, uh, Kotlin, .NET MAUI, uh, anything mobile, basically, even Unity apps. Um, and what's interesting is that we are a really small company. So we're operating in a space where the competitors are hundreds or thousands of employees. Um, Code Magic's only about 24 people at the moment. So it's really exciting to see that we, we can um, be active in this space and really help the community. And we, we really take care of mobile developers. Um, and I think one of the things that helps us with that is is the fact that we're pretty transparent with things like pricing and the fact that we want to help developers and we want to develop a, a good solution, provide good support, um, listen to what our users tell us about, you know, what can make things better. So um, it's been a really exciting journey. I've been with the company for four years and it's gone from strength to strength. So we've gone from literally zero to uh, where we are now. So it's really good. Yeah, that's cool. And from from a user's perspective, so full full disclosure, I'm not paying for Code Magic. I'm a free tier user at the moment. Uh, the stuff that I'm doing uh, has been easy to, easy to use for me and uh, has helped me to understand how you want to do this for mobile applications. As I said, there's a few things that I still have questions on, and this is essentially why you're here. Um, so I would propose. Maybe we can do two sessions. We're going to start this one with looking at an example on how CI/CD in Code Magic looks for maybe an iOS or a Flutter application in general. Maybe we can expand that a little bit into how would I bring this now to the test flight application, which is what you need if you want to test an app, an, an iOS application um, on the on the App Store, um, and then. I would want to ask you back to talk a little bit about how do I bring this together with my deployments for the backend. So let's start. Let's dive into yeah. it. And uh, maybe let's start with sharing a screen and um, yeah. and uh, maybe yeah, giving us an intro on how the Code Magic UI looks and okay. what the hell are we going to do? Let's have a look at it then. So let's just share the screen. Okay, so here we are in Code Magic. I'll take this full screen so you can get a good view of it. Um, Perfect. There we go. 
So let's uh, just have a quick look through some of the key things and then really focus in on this Flutter application that you were struggling with, with publishing. So there's a, a few things um, that we're going to have to talk about as well regarding getting ready for publishing an iOS application. Mm -hmm. And that will be things like uh, having the Apple Developer Port Program membership and working with things like certificates and provisioning profiles. Um, so I'll come back to that in a moment, but just a, a quick spin through Code Magic. So when you initially log in, you'll be taken to your application overview. Uh, as you can see here, I've already got some applications set up so we can talk about them. I've got this one here that we're building for Flutter, and I've got another one here for our back end discussion that we'll have later. Um, very easy to add applications from your Git repository. So for this example here, I've got a, a Flutter application. I have used Flutter Create, and I basically committed that for my Git repo, and then I added it using this nice little button here, told it which team I want to add it into. I've got lots of teams here because I'm doing lots of demos all over the place. I then told it which GitHub repository type or so finder you're, I'm using. Yeah, you're going to connect to Bitbucket, GitHub, and GitLab, I see. Is this yeah. then always the cloud version or does this also a self-hosted version? That's a good question. You can connect to the self-hosted GitHub, uh, Bitbug, and GitLab. It, GitLab. Um, we would use an SSH key pair to connect to those when they're on-premise. And there are some requirements for the firewall. So on our documentation, you can see which IP address ranges need to be whitelisted in order for you to uh, make that connection uh, to the self-hosted repo. Okay. Do you also allow an agent-based um, access in terms of I can host an agent on my own premises and that opens up the connection uh, or not yet? Not yet. So we're focusing at the moment on just uh, the cloud-based rudders that we provide. So we've got the Mac OS infrastructure, and our defaults now are the Mac Mini M2. Now, things are probably going to change going forward. We're probably going to start looking at things like M4 because they've just announced them, so that's quite exciting. We've got Linux machines, and we've got Windows machines. So in terms or in context of the Flutter, that's really valuable because people are using Flutter to, to develop for Linux and for Windows. So that gives you the opportunity to build and deploy from those platforms as well. Yeah, you you kind of answered a question that I didn't want to ask yet. I wanted to have that one for later. I was really talking about, um, let's assume my Bitbucket is not accessible through the internet and I still want to connect it to Code Magic, right? Uh, I guess today that would not be uh, supported. No, it, it's okay. got to be internet accessible. Okay. So as long as we've got that security with the SSH key pair and the uh, whitelisting through the firewall. So cool. that's a prerequisite. <laughs> And then the other option that we see here is uh, would be allowing me to connect to any Git URL that is uh, public C available. That's right, yeah. So you, this is where you'd go in to connect to the self-hosted repository. Okay. You'd have to put in the, the URL, um, the Git URL there. Perfect. Let's just go out of that yeah. and go back and just show you an example so, of just choosing a repository. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So if I chose GitHub, with, you know, that's my preferred one, it would then connect into my GitHub. I've already got the Code Magic application installed in my GitHub. So that allows Excellent. me access to either all the repositories or you can select which repository is available. So you can see I've got all kinds of stuff here. You would then just select it and then choose which app it is. So for us, we're going to choose Flutter via Workflow Editor. And once you click the Finish Add Application, that then makes the app appear in here. Then it's ready for you to configure it. But before we look at the configuration, there's some other things that you need to consider as well. So I mentioned previously that if you're going to be publishing to TestFlight or to the App Store, you're going to need to have the Apple Developer Program um, um, subscription. So that's $99 a year. Uh, there's no workaround for that if you want to be publishing to the store. And that gives you the ability to not only publish your apps to the store, but also to use what's something called TestFlight which means you can distribute your applications to test users. So that can be people who are a member of your Apple developer program. So if you're working in a team, your, your team members are normally invited to join that. 
or you may have external testers. So you can just add people's email addresses, add a, a group, and then publish it out to them. They can install the test flight app onto their mobile device. And then when we build with Code Magic and publish directly to the App Store Connect or test flight, it then distributes the apps directly to their devices. Now, one thing that the App Store uh, or Apple Developer Program gives you is the ability to create an API key that works with their sort of partner site, which is called App Store Connect. That's where you find things like the list of applications. That's where you find test flight. It also gives you the ability to create an API key that allows us to publish applications and query which applications are published to that site. Um, and that's how Code Magic is able to do the publishing directly from the, the UI here that we mm -hmm. see. Now, what you would do is go off to the App Store Connect. Um, I'm not going to take you into that. That's a, a whole other topic and probably another hour's discussion on using and configuring App Store Connect. But um, in our documentation, you can find all the explanation about it. But essentially what you'll get is an API key and you'll go into your team settings here. You will go into the team integrations and you'll see that as developer portal is one of the options. We can then click manage keys and then you can add your key. So I've got two keys here. I've created two different API keys. One of these I'm going to delete after I use it just for security reasons. But typically what it's going to ask you for is a P8 file that you download from App Store Connect when you generate it. You create a reference name that we can use. Then you copy the issuer ID and a key identifier directly from App Store Connect, add it here, and then that will allow us to start talking with App Store Connect. Cool. Okay. So. So we are ready to go. We got some code. We got an integration to App Store Connect, uh, Partner Connect set up. And uh, I think there is another piece that we need for iOS applications, which is generating some certificates that we can use to publish. Yeah. Uh, how do we do that? Okay, so you're going to need a few things. So one of the things that you need to make sure you have set up in uh, apps, it's in the Apple Developer Program, is something called a bundle identifier. And that's something that can be used to uniquely identify your application. So that could be something like io.codemagic.flutterapp. Um, and then just make sure it's something unique. You will also need to create something called a provisioning profile, And that's used for distribution via App Store or Test Flight. Um, and there's different types of profiles. So if you're going to be publishing via Test Flight or the App Store, you need to use a profile called uh, App Store, which sounds pretty logical. Um, if you're going to be publishing to other services, so we're not going to dis we're not going to touch these uh, in this discussion. Um, but if you wanted to, to, for example, publish to uh, the Firebase app distribution, you would use something called an ad hoc profile. And that just means it can go via a third party service. If you want to use Code Magic to distribute your apps internally, you would use an ad hoc profile as well. So it's just another way um, to identify the app. The profile itself typically includes uh, the Apple uh, app ID. So it's associated with the app that you create. Um, and it's just another level of security for your application. The other thing that you're going to need is an iOS distribution certificate. And that is a way to identify that you as a developer are the person developing it, uploading it and distributing it. So it's a security mechanism that you need to have a Mac OS machine. So this is kind of one of the important things with any kind of iOS uh, app distribution. Normally, you're going to have to have access to an iOS, uh, well, Mac OS machine. Uh, firstly, to generate this um, distribution certificate. Um, it is possible with Code Magic to do that using the API. We can create a, a key for you. Um, Typically, people who use Windows machines will go down that path, but it is kind of a, a complicated way of doing it. And we would always recommend whenever you can get hold of a Mac OS machine, especially if you're going to be de debugging um, iOS based apps and, and, you know, working with this sort of 
platform, so anything related to iOS. Um, but we have some great blog articles on our site, on our blog, about how to do that. But again, that's a that's another two hour topic that we could go into on how to do it. Yeah, and, and, uh, and essentially, <laughs> I would I would I would say as a as a developer that does this all on his own, I would love to have this exposed in Code Magic, like as a possibility. Give me that. Give me that button that says create myself a distribution certificate, right? That then calls your API in the back end that would make it easier. But we don't want to spend too much time on that preparations. We talked about we need those certificates. We need to set it up. We will link yeah. the documentation in the show notes. Now let's get back to see how does CI C D then look like at the end. Okay. Great stuff. So we will then go back over to this apps tab over here. So uh, I've already added my application as we went through earlier. I'm going to go into the configuration of it here. So this brings us into our what we call workflow editor. So with Code Magic, you've got two options. You've got the GUI-based configuration here, and if you've got more advanced use cases or you're more used to checking in things into into your source code for configuration, we've got the YAML option. We're going to focus on this particular app with using the uh, the GUI. So what have we got here? We've uh, got a lot of configuration options for setting up a workflow that's going to build your application and then allow you to publish it into the store. So we will have the build um, selection here. Now, I've isolated this to iOS. Now, there's no reason why you can't select multiple, but mm -hmm. for the purposes of our discussion, we're going to focus on iOS. Yes. We, therefore, when you're doing anything iOS, you need to be using an Apple instance. So we're using macOS M2. This is our default instance. Free tier, free tier users get macOS M2, and people who are using pay-as-you-go get M2. Uh, for other technologies, there, as I mentioned previously, you can access the, the Linux and, and Windows machines, but we'll leave that uh, as now Something that a lot of people are very picky of is when using build machines that are shared instances in the cloud, how do you isolate different builds and how do you ensure that no one can access my source code when executing builds on these instances? Okay, this is a very good question. So uh, in the data center itself, these are virtual machines running on dedicated Mac OS machines. So these are completely isolated. A virtual machine is created when you initiate a build. We will then clone the source code repository to that machine, along with any secrets or environment variables. We will then do the build. And then once the build has reached its final point, for you, that may be just running a build. For others, it might be running a build and distributing. Once that is complete, we destroy the machine and it no longer exists. So no other users have access to that machine. Nobody else can access any of the environment variables. There is an encryption key which is specific to each user or team. So even Code Magic doesn't have access to any of the values. So, for example, if somebody comes to us and says, I've lost a certificate or a key, can you provide it for us? We can't do that because everything's encrypted. We can't retrieve the values. So it's really important that you don't rely on Code Magic to be a place to come and retrieve your secrets from if you lose them on your own systems, for example. So okay. it's really, really important. Cool. This is this is a great uh, information because I wasn't aware of that. And there is other services that struggle building a similar system, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, do we have a technical documentation for that piece as well and how that actually looks like that you could share? Um, uh, possibly in the documentation, there should be okay. some information regarding. The other thing that might be of interest to people, if we have obviously various levels of, of users. So we've, we've got sort of solo devs, we've got teams, we've got enterprises. Some enterprises are extremely security conscious. And in that um, sense, what we can do is provide what's called dedicated hosts, which they can have their own pool of machines, which means they will only ever use those machines. Now, it doesn't mean they get bare metal machines. It means that they have a dedicated, let's say, uh, an M2 Mac Studio that will provide them two virtual machines that only their company will use. Okay. So okay. that's just one thing yeah. to be aware of. But you don't yet uh, support my own fleet. We talked about that at the beginning, no. right? Um, That's and, correct. We don't. And 
I don't know if that's a requirement, to be honest, right? But uh, looking at um, other competitors, I would say like GitLab, GitHub, uh, that also offers CI/CD possibilities, right? There is a lot of situations where uh, that is actually possible, right? And that's, some that's right. It, it's something we've we've talked about. I'm not. We'll never say never, uh, but just at the moment, we've got some other developments that we're working on, which are um, really exciting. So we're we're focusing on those. One thing that does come to mind, though, there is the possibility to run on uh, AWS macOS machines. Um, so we have the capability. We don't um, we don't advertise it widely, but that is something that we can potentially do as well. So yeah. So if you're listening to this uh, yeah. and you really need uh, self-hosted uh, instances or build fleets for Code Magic, please let us know uh, in the co in the comments or reach out to Kevin separately. Um, but I think uh, I understand why you don't want to do that right now. It opens up a lot of problems in managing connectivity and managing permissions and access and that kind of stuff. So absolutely uh, makes sense. Okay, so Great. okay, let's, let's go. Move on. So um, the next, uh, I'm not going to go into build triggers just yet. I'm going to go into something here called environment variables. Let's so, assume build triggers are boring. Build triggers is... Well, well they're not boring as such. Uh, I, I can go through it. It, it, it's, it. It's very important because it's, it's one it is a key functionality. So let's not skip it. Let's, let's have okay. a quick discussion. Okay. So, but but for, me, for me, they are in this case, for the problem that we're trying to solve, they are boring because I know that, that you support everything that I need, which is branch-based builds, automated builds, webhooks builds, and that kind yeah, of stuff. With that, right. they are boring for my conversation, might be interesting for other folks. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, you support everything that we need from a CI/CD perspective, and that's the absolutely. main message. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so this section here, the environment variables. So if you have anything that you need um, on your machine when you're running a build, so you would add it here. So that could be, uh, let's say you're using the AWS CLI tools, probably you're going to put in your CLI key, your region, um, and add them to a, a um, to this section here so they can be accessed on the machine. I've set some up here that are going to allow me to use the Code Magic CLI tools mm -hmm. so I can query the current build number of the app that's in test flight, bring that back to the machine, and then increment it by one in one of my scripts and then publish it using the incremented build version. So I've added in some values here. Again, this is all in the documentation. If you search for build versioning, this is clearly described, uh, but it requires us to set these environment variables here. So what you'll notice here, some have got some dots. These are encrypted, secure, can't be changed, can't be retrieved. Okay. And I've got an app ID in clear text, so you can change it, update it, um, and whatever. So let's just... Makes sense. Go from cool. there. Um, right, we're gonna we're gonna come down a bit to the build because this is the the bit where we want to actually build our application. So, um, so, 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 just just one sec now. How do you see different stages of the of the um, of the workflow? I, I saw test over there. This would be the oh, first okay. one. Or um, so this is kind of your workflow editor at the end, if I see that correctly. So. Yeah, tests just lets us run things like static code analysis mm -hmm. and run our integration tests. These little things that you see here actually allow you to put some scripts in as well. Okay. So if you want to write some shell scripts, you can okay. set up whatever you need there. Uh, so you've got the post clone, pre test, and then I think you've got this post test and pre build script. So, you so let's call that hooks where I can kind of integrate my own things that I want to do. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Then we get to the build, which is where we yeah. choose the configuration. Yeah, configuration. Uh, a lot of people ask about this. Um, so typically, you'll be able to uh, select your Flutter version, um, set your Xcode version, um, pods versions, etc. So mm -hmm. pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. And then we can choose... Um, what kind of mode we're building in. So because we want to go to the App Store, this is selected as release, and we can add some build arguments in here. So this bit of 
script here is going to allow us to update the build number. So remember I was talking about the CLI tools from Code Magic. Um, we have this pre-installed on our machines so we can reference them in scripts. Now, this command here, app store connect, get latest test flight build number is exactly one of those commands. It's going to use the API mm -hmm. to go up to the app store connect or test flights. We're going to reference the Apple ID. So when you go into your App Store Connect and look at your Apple, uh, look at your application, go into general information, you can grab the ID. Uh, it's going to retrieve that. And then we've got this increment by one here. So that just gives okay. us a way to, to easily take care of that. Makes sense. Good stuff. So next and thing. Up, up the CUS, we have disabled the rest. The rest is not going to be executed, right? So Yeah, um, so we're not using Android yeah. or, or uh, web at this point. So Yeah, and we are assuming that you know a little bit on Flutter if you're watching this video. So if you have follow-up questions, please let us know as well, and we will try to give you some uh, more insights or comments on how to how to access that and, and, and how to understand how, how all of these parameters are made at the end. Yeah. Now, this release will just build uh, the the file at the end, right? It will not directly push it to the App Store yet. It's just going to not package it not up. Not just yet. It's going to run the build unless we then tell it to do something else, which is where we get to. Yeah, before we go there, where will it store the artifacts that are produced? Okay, so when we run a build, we will put them on the log. So let's have a look at one we've already run. Sorry for derailing, but at the end... This no, is, that's uh, important. That's important. So let's go into my latest build. So you can see I've already done a few here. And I'm going to click on this little icon here to view the build that was run. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is really interesting as well. So we'll address the... Ah, so there's no artifacts for this one because guess what? It's the web one. So let's. Well, there, there, there is a, there's a web artifact, right? Which is fine. I, 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 I didn't gather it. So um, let's have a look at this iOS one where I had the, the artifacts yep. gathered. So, yeah. So here we will gather the artifacts. So we've got the IPA. Um, we've even got the a zip of the app. And we've got the debug symbols here. So. So you're, are so you're essentially gathered. storing them uh, in within the build, and I can then access them through an API and or through an URL if I want to, um, and uh, these kind of things. That's yeah, so the, if you've used the correct provisioning profile, so as I was talking about earlier, if you've used the ad hoc, you could actually just come straight here, scan this QR code on your iPhone, and install this app directly onto your device. Okay, okay. so you've got immediate access to it. Um, okay. We also... So do you allow integrating um, other artifact store systems um, from you enterprises? Cannot, or not? You can do that, yeah. You'd have to write a script and use a CLI just to um, upload the apps, uh, the, the artifacts, the binaries, or you could even put them into an S3 bucket. So we've got customers doing a variety of different things. Um, okay. But this is something, magic. if we go back to the, the, the workflow, this is something that you would do in the post-build step, right? Where you, you would now integrate right. your own piece of code to get those artifacts shipped somewhere yes. that means code magic today doesn't have any out of the box integration with tools like artifactory code artifact or whatever that's, that's correct what I mean. so okay. after you've done your build you would probably go into here and then run the script to use the cli to upload cool so if if uh, if once again you want to do this and publish to Artifactory or to Code Artifact or something like that, let us know. And uh, Kevin can uh, put that into the roadmap of Code Magic itself. I think that's a good idea potentially for some yeah, of the more enterprise users. Any feedback is welcome. So uh, you can reach out to us um, in the comments, obviously, here, or you can join our Discord uh, server and uh, let us know there. Oh, cool. I think I'm not on the Discord yet, so I'm going to need to ah, join that one. I'll send you the link. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. That's a good call out. Okay, so, but still with those hooks, I have the possibility to do whatever I want, right? Um, yeah, now, yeah. And one follow up question. I know that we didn't want to go that route, but it comes up now. If I go to the YAML configuration, where is the script stored right now? So, so what I'm what I'm getting at is if I have a lot of things happening in those web in in those hooks like post build mm -hmm. script and stuff like that, there will always come a situation when this is something that I want to version because I want to protect it from yeah. uh, from Johannes doing a, a wrong uh, ad over there and then failing all builds. Um, is there a possibility to retrieve the YAML file for the workflow configuration from the same GitHub repository as well? Or how do you actually do that? No. So if you decide to work with YAML, you can't 
convert the workflow editor configuration into a YAML file. Okay. Um, you would have to, the best advice I can give would be to go to our samples repository. So we've got the Code Magic GitHub repository and we've got examples for Flutter or Swift or whatever. You can literally take one of those examples, fill in the information, it's really well commented, add your scripts, the script steps, and then check that um, YAML configuration. We call it codemagic.yaml into the root of any branch that you're going to be building. And then you can get started really easily. Uh, okay, that so that, way. But that still means if I have a Codemagic YAML in my GitHub repository, um, the uh, Codemagic itself is going to recognize that as being available. And then I can use those workflow configurations directly out of the box, which yeah. means if I ever transition to the YAML, I can just store everything in GitHub and will not need to store the post builds here. That's what I mean. That's that, that's right. Yeah. So okay, you cool. you you would put everything that you do uh, into a YAML file and stop using the workflow editor at that point. Okay. So here's something that I would love to see is the possibility to really create the YAML and also go back. So uh, something that Code Catalyst was doing very well is the possibility to see the YAML file and then also see the workflow editor. Right. Uh, so that would be a great feature for me, at least as a user, because mm -hmm. then I can, depending on who I talk to, switch between being an, <laughs> how to say, um, a developer and being somewhere where I need to showcase what we're actually doing. But yeah. it makes sense. Cool. Thank you. So then no after building that stuff, we go to distributing it to the App Store. Yeah. So this is the bit where we're going to get you over the fence and get you up to the App Store. So we are now going to define a few things. So remember we're talking about the code signing certificate. So this is what's called the iOS distribution certificate. And one thing to note with that, you most, uh, well, everybody's got a limit of three of them. So if you have a, a big team and you get happy creating certificates, just be aware that there is a limit of, of three per team. Uh, and that also applies if you use Code Magic to automatically generate certificates, then uh, you, you, you may sometimes run into that limit from Apple. But I do it manually because I'm just used to doing it, and I like to just upload them directly to the, the store, uh, to the configuration setting here. So uh, it's a bit grayed out, um, but you can see here that I added my iOS distribution 2024.p12. And then I added a mobile provisioning profile here, which is specifically for the app that I'm working with. So that allows me to sign the application and make sure that when we create that virtual machine on the Code Magic infrastructure, it's going to have Xcode, yeah? So it could be version 15.4, it could be version 16.1, but it doesn't know anything about your Apple account and your uh, Apple developer program. What we're going to do is we're going to take these certificate and this profile. We're going to have your app cloned there, and then we're going to set up the, the required certificates on the machine in the keychain access. And we're going to add the, the mobile provisioning profile to the to Xcode, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's a, able to use these things to actually sign the application using Xcode on the machine. So it's important to, to have these um, on the, the configuration here so we can do that signing. Once that's done, we're going to be able to run a, a build and, and create the signed app. So this is, this is really uh, critical. Now, once we've got that signed app, it's going to give us what's called an IPA file. Okay, this is the binary that is used to publish to the App Store. If you didn't sign, you could alternatively create a simulator build, but it's not really much use to you. You could run it on a simulator, but that's got a different app extension. That's dot a, a dot app is a simulator extension. So okay. most people want most people want to sign it and get it published to the store. So that's the the key thing to understand. Now, next thing is once we've got that, we can go through publishing it to the App Store and to Test Flight. So. All that requires is for you to select the API key. Remember, we, we went to the team configuration and we looked at the uh, keys from Apple that we'd added there. Yep. I've selected one here. So it picks it up from your team configuration and allows yep. us to use the drop down to select it. And then you've got some various um, 
options here. So you've got things like publish, even if your tests fail. So if you're running some unit tests for your application or something like that, it's still going to publish. You can do submission to test flight beta review, uh, distribute to your beta groups and tell it which name to distribute to, and even ask it to submit directly to App Store review. So you've got a few options available there. So that so uh, uh, interesting. A few questions on that. So if I have none of the three bling things down there selected, it's just going to publish and test flight, and then I personally can test the application. Um, so when we're talking about um, yes, or, yes, sorry, yes, you you, yes, you mean okay. test as in get it into uh, test flight, and, and, and then I it. can install it from test flight on my own uh, iOS device, and I can test it, but it will not give anyone yeah. else access. Right. Yeah, exactly. Now, okay. So. Now, if I want to run a beta test, I would need to execute uh, submit to test flight beta review, which would then trigger a review by the uh, Apple team somehow. Yeah. So normally, what happens is that you would um, create a group of users in test flight specifically for that app, and okay. then you can then publish it via the test flight app on the iOS to those users. Okay. Um, I think now I'm, I might need to double check this. I think it only needs to go to the test flight beta review when you start adding external test users. So okay. uh, maybe something I need to double check and, and people just that are not on your there. team potentially is what yeah, what, what, so... you wanna, what you want to test. Okay, so okay, so let's not talk about the Apple specifics. Let's talk about now. This is done and this is distributed now. For me, submitting this to App Store Review somehow doesn't make sense. And I'm going to try to tell you why. Um, if we talk about CI CD, I always advocate for having an immutable artifact that will then be kind of used across different stages. Now, if I look at building a mobile app, for me, this means the output of this build is something that lands in test flight and is then available for testing. This is my immutable artifact. I will mm -hmm. now take this version, will submit it to beta, and then I will take that version and submit it to the real app store. This would be kind of the next two stages. With the, with the options that you have up here, it kind of inclines that every time I want to now run a new build, I would re-trigger the build right from the start. Is that what Code Magic supports right now, or is this the the, the, the normal process for mobile yeah. applications? So it's a normal because we want to make sure that every build you do is run on a pristine environment, a clean start. So we don't support uh, staged CI/CDs where you okay. can. I think other providers let you resume from a certain stage, and then you know if your tests fail, then you can resume it from there and go onwards. We don't do that. Every build we do, it's a complete clone build or eat, do your tests do your build do your publish um, okay so so that essentially means that if i want so now two options to implement my ask in code magic one option would be to have a second workflow that does publish to beta and a third workflow that does, does publish to app store or can i not have multiple workflows you can, you can. okay so what we would do there is we would come up to uh, Yeah, I would just have a different workflow yeah. that does that, and I think I think I got that. I think I got that question, and I got that question answered for myself. I could just have another workflow that Code Magic would then just use to do beta, and the trigger would be different. So I would manually trigger exactly. that, and that kind of stuff. Now, the other option would be, I use Code Magic to only do the build and put it into uh, into test flight, right? And then mm -hmm. I execute the, the promotion flow outside. Of code magic that would be yeah the yeah okay. that is probably the most popular option okay. so right. most people want to have the finger to do that final push to the real app store so we have it as options we we make it available but from experience a lot of people have that that they, they that, that do makes it in sense right and and, 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 and and i'm just trying to understand how the flow would be from a necessity perspective because at the end this is what this is what makes a difference from a CI and a CD deployment and delivery perspective at the end, right? You want to maybe potentially going forward, always release to the App Store directly based on some tests and you, you might need some staging or whatever, right? Yeah. But that's stuff that I, to be honest, I haven't done enough mobile applications to really yeah. talk about that, right? 
<laughs> what uh, what most people will be doing is, you know, work, working on a feature. They'll have a branch. They'll do a pull request. They'll merge it into the the the, the branch they want to use, and then run the workflow that's going to put it into test flight. And then if they're happy with it, then they'll submit it to App Store review from there. So as you've as you pointed out, you can have as many workflows as you want. You can have dev, staging, production. You can have pull requests in play that you know you're using to manage that workflow. Everybody does it different, so I can't recommend one or the other. But that uh, is uh, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, so then let's let's um, let's see how. I think that's the end of the workflow at the end, right? Publishing that. Yeah, and, and we and, can and, we can try running it and see. Yeah, let's do. Let's so, do that. Under normal circumstances, I would set it up with the build triggers, which we kind of glossed over. You know, push code to the repository. If you're on a dev workflow, for example, just automatically start it. We're going to use the manual button. This will give you an uh, option of which branch you want to build if you've got multiple branches and which workflow. Interestingly here, you've also got uh, SSH and VNC access. So you can either access it by the terminal or use the graphical uh, interface to see what's going on. And we would just click the the start new build. With just one another comment uh, on here: you get twenty minutes after the build finishes to keep accessing that machine. Why would you want to access the machine? You may ask. Well, if you're debugging issues, something's going wrong, you might want to get onto the machine, um, run things manually, or see if you've copied files to the right place. Having that access is uh, really important to troubleshoot issues i think that this button should be forbidden to be honest <laughs> if, well you have to manually check it so we we yeah. kind of reduce the access and you, but it, it but it should ask you five times if you really want to do that and it should give you uh someone that approves uh that and uh, anyway um but i think <laughs> uh, i i get i get it sometimes you need it yeah sometimes so this this will uh kick off the build and we go through the stage of preparing the machine and then you're going to see the the steps progress um each one of these titles going to produce a log that we can inspect so if we just tap on that you can see um that i've set some environment variables you can see that they're hidden so because they're encrypted we don't reveal anything like that in the logs We're currently using an older version of Xcode, so we, I think we're up to 16.2 now. Um, just on that note, we do try to publish the latest versions of Xcode within a day of release. So cool. we really try and make a big effort to make sure... And the latest version of Flutter? Of Flutter? When is the latest? Yeah, the, 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 the latest we get there, probably the, the day after as well. So why it takes a day is because we're using virtual machines. We need to update the of image course. that we use. We need to update 50 gigabytes of you know image and upload it to the data center. So that's why it takes a little bit of time for it to get there. But uh, we, we reckon it's still quite quick. So uh, Especially cool. when you compare it to some of the other people out there who take, uh, let's say, months to update to newer versions of Xcode. <laughs> So uh, we're really happy about how quickly we can deliver that. Um, cool. okay. It's already finished, did it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's doing publishing, which is really cool. So Wow, but but that means building the iOS app took like 33 seconds in this case. This is amazing. Yeah. So, and here you can see the logs and telling you, you know, if there's any problems, what the version number is. You can see I've got the build numbers five, so it successfully incremented. And then you can come down to publishing and we can see that I got my app. No errors uploading and it tells you the name of the binary that it uploaded. Now, obviously, that's going to be quick. It's a vanilla Flutter app. There's of no course. real dependencies in there. There's no real meat to this application. So, But you could now show that in test flight, right? Because it would now be available and potentially yeah. you could also run that on your own mobile if you would have been prepared for yeah. setting all of that up. Yeah, that's right. So the the app will be going straight into test flight. There's obviously a few minutes that, and it varies with Apple. So some apps are available within a couple of minutes. Other times it's 10 minutes. So you've got to wait for it to be processed on Apple's side before it again gets pushed down to test flight on the mobile device. That is sometimes why people choose to use alternative services because they don't have such a long processing time. Um On that note also, it reminded me of a really cool feature that Code Magic offers. So 
if you need to produce uh, release notes, normally what you have to do is wait for the application to be published to test flight. So that could be 10 minutes. Once it's ready and visible in test flight, then you can upload your release notes. Now, with Code Magic, what we do is we use something called asynchronous processing. So if you've decided to add release notes, we'll look for release notes.json in the root of the repository or release note.txt. If we see it's there, we will then use some logic to upload the app. When it finishes publishing, we'll say that the build is finished. But in the background, we hand off the process to another machine, which is waiting for a response back from Test Flight or App Store Connect to say that the app is then available. Then we'll take your release notes and we'll upload it to the test flight so it's got okay. all the what what's new cool. this is a this is such a time saver because a build yeah. let's say you're let's say a production build takes 20 minutes you have to wait another 10 minutes for it to be available in the app yeah. store before you can get the release notes published so we we've just taken that from 30 minutes back down to 20 minutes and you don't have to worry about it because it happens automatically perfect um, which is really cool this is really good yeah cool okay so now we got the app to the app store. We could now access it in test flight. We could now play, start playing around with it on your own, on our own mobile if you want to. Absolutely. But that doesn't answer you the Johannes question because why did I actually look at Flutter? I looked at Flutter because it has cross mobile, cross mobile and web uh, deployment in an automated fashion, right? Uh, so you now answered the question, and I assume for Play Store it's going to be a similar uh, process. But we didn't bring this to the web yet, right? Because I would like uh -huh. to have the same application hosted on a web somewhere, and I want to access it through my own um, browser, uh, because that's the that's one of the benefits that I see in actually looking into Flutter. Um, I think that you also can do that, right? How how simple or how difficult is that for 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 you guys? It's really simple. So let's go back into the configuration. So what? I did previously is I duplicated this current workflow and then I named it web deployment. Mm -hmm. You could do this in the same workflow. So again, I just have a habit of separating concerns. I like to see which workflow is doing what. So I just mm -hmm. created a new one called web deployment. I unchecked iOS and just selected web. Okay. And then what we did there is well, the, the, only the, build, thing that's, the build should be similar, I guess. Everything's going to be the same. So it's going to take the existing settings. So we've got the same Flutter version, Xcode version. But what's important here, it's going to ignore this because we're not building for iOS. But if you did want to put some um, build arguments in for web, okay. then you could. But the important thing here is where we distribute it. So it's going to build mm -hmm. that sort of web project for us. Okay. And what you can do is two options. Now, I haven't used Code Magic static pages, but that gives Ooh. you an option for testing. So That's, what it that will sounds do, interesting. It is cool. So basically, it lets you create uh, an Let's app. activate that. Let's see if we can. For some reason, we grayed out, and I don't know why. <laughs> ah, okay. Let me just see. Let me just see why it's grayed out. Let me just refresh the page. There's something going on there. I uh, know the distribution is what we want to actually. Okay. Cool. So we did it. It just needed a, a. So we could just try Flutter Workshop or demo. I'll just call it Flutter Workshop for now. Oh, this is. Uh, and, that, and, and the other option is a published to a three, which would be. Yeah. So yeah. the other the other option here. So I'm going to save those changes. Yes. Cool. Okay. And then the other option we've got is publishing to an AWS S3 bucket. And this allows me to set up a S3 bucket, make sure it's configured for static hosting. Uh, I also noticed when I set this up yesterday as an option for AWS Amplify. I've not explored that yet. So I guess really? there, there's a, another option there for hosting uh, Flutter but, builds but, as but, websites. But, but, but where is that here? 
Uh, we don't have it here yet. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that, but may- maybe in the future we'll be able to add something. So this is really cool, cool because Amplify has been investing a lot of stuff uh, and a lot of things into the community, into the the Flutter community as well, right? So this is yeah, going to be great. Yeah. They're really, really active, so that's really positive. So, and all it needs here for publishing to that S3 bucket. Once you've done your configurations up in your, your you know, AWS Management Console, it's going to ask for your access key. Uh, that, that's your... The, yeah, that's the stuff that uh, that I do regularly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, it just needs these two things, and it needs the bucket name. So, that's all you're going to need, and then we should be able to just start a new build, make sure uh, it's going to run the web deployment one, and let's see where we get to. So. It should be really interesting. And then I just need to remember what the URL is. So I'm just going to grab it off my cheat sheet I've got over so here. I, I remembered the URL for the Code Magic uh, hosting that you just said. This is interesting. Uh-huh. So I'm going to I'm gonna share my, my screen for a second. And you can just leave your screen going. Don't, don't do anything. Okay. Um, if we look at the current stage, so this is how it looks like before actually it was deployed. Right, so this is now the build is running on Kevin's screen, and if I access the URL that uh, Kevin has put in into the settings of the uh, of the build, uh, which would be Code Magic Static Hosted, I will now see that well, this is what it's actually going to produce in a second. Right, so I think it's successful. We should just get the vanilla Flutter app, you know, the counter app that we normally get. So yeah, let's wait for publishing and then let's yeah. see. So actually, actually. Your security team is not going to like me doing this because it's actually going to expose that most probably you're using S3 to host Code Magic uh, oh, applications, imagine, yeah. and uh, this should essentially not be the error message that you would send. It should be a real uh, 404 message or something like that. But as you can see now that the publishing is done, I have that we have that sample app hosted over here, which is the the usual Flutter demo app. So this is amazing. This is really yeah. really good. Awesome, and then. Uh... If I can just bring up the AWS, let's see if we can just bring up a, another one. That's the bucket and domain. So let's see if it got there as well. Yeah, we've got it hosted. So. Well, now there is a small difference. Oh, is there? What is it? If I see that correctly, and I'm just speculating here, can you go to the? Can you go off uh, full screen? Yeah. And can you look at the URL of the S3 bucket that you just reached out to? And there is an HTTP over there. Oh, okay. And the stuff that you're hosting, and I'm going to share my screen again. Yeah. So you just made me smile. This one has an HTTPS up here. Oh, right? okay. So you so, directly generate and certificate and stuff like that, right? So I would then uh, encourage people to use the the Code Magic hosted version instead of going with S3 because otherwise you have a, a little bit of a uh, yeah just uh, security just, problem over there. Yeah, yeah. Just just be aware though that the the intention for the Code Magic static pages is purely for testing and and demo. It's not for production grade apps. Okay, so we would always recommend finding somewhere to host it properly in the. Uh, and that makes sense, and maybe you will need to make that available. Uh, well, you, you, you will make need to make that a little bit more transparent than it is in the current stage of the UI, because at the moment it really looks like okay, cool, I can directly use this to host host um, as well. Mm-hmm. Cool, um, Kevin. This was at least the first part of the session that we wanted to do today. I have some more challenges for you, but we're going to do that in the next session. So uh, let's do a little bit of a wrap up of what we learned and what we looked at before we uh, go into the second uh, recording over here. So sum up, summing up what we learned, I'm going to give it a try and you can tell me what I missed. We uh, learned um, that uh, Code Magic can be used to deploy mobile applications at the niche, niche that you're in. Uh, you have uh, so you support m- most of or all of the mobile, most common mobile frameworks that we have today um, on the market. We looked at how do we do the CI/CD part, and I would say this is especially a continuous integration part of um, building an iOS app. Uh, we looked at how to also extend that workflow and how to deploy the application to the web. And uh, we also uh, looked into the nitty details on what we need to prepare to actually publish for iOS. Yeah. I think that is kind of the wrap up of what we did. And uh, did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. Cool. Then, 
how should people reach out to you if they have follow-up questions? Good question. So I'm active on LinkedIn, so you should be able to find me there, Kevin Shahoida. Uh, not so much on Twitter, but I am there, at Kev Suda. Um, yeah, that, that's probably the best ways. Uh, Kevin at codemagic.io. If you want to email me direct, that's fine as well. So. Cool. So I'm going to add that to the show notes when we publish this one. Uh, but with that, Kevin, thank you so much for this first session. And uh, looking Very forward welcome. to do the second one with you, where we are going to challenge you on, we looked at now a mobile application, but a mobile application cannot live usually without a backend. So how do we actually use Code Magic to deploy both the backend and the frontend for a mobile application, which is the, the full picture of making a mobile application available? At least that's my understanding of it. So talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks, Johannes. <laughs>